Hey, welcome back to Mr. Mig's Classroom. I'm Mr. Mig, and today we're going to continue on with our FAA Part 107 drone license test. Um, so we've been working on this for a little bit while now, and what I wanted to do today was talk about METARs. Uh, I've had a few people in the comments section ask about METARs and weather. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of weather today, but specifically we're going to talk about METARs. So if you don't know what a METAR is, you kind of need to know this for the FAA Part 107 exam. I'll be honest with you. There's not a ton of METAR questions, though you do need to expect them to be there. When I took the, the exam, I would say there were two METAR questions out of 60. Um, I've, some of my students said they had as many as five METAR questions. Um, actually, maybe some, if you include METARs and TAFs together, maybe as many as seven. Uh, so you do have to know these. This is something that you'll need to know. It will be on the test. Um, so anyway, without further ado, a METAR is a weather report. So it's a weather report used for aviation, and that's it. It's saying, what is the weather right now at this moment in time? Not what is it going to be, but what is it right now? Uh, and that's the main difference between a METAR and a TAF, which I'll talk about in later videos. A TAF is a prediction of what the weather be, will be over the next 24 to 30 hours, whereas the METAR is... At this time period, when the METAR report was made, this is what the weather was right now. So let's break down this report right here. I have an example of a METAR report. Uh, we'll break it down and we'll look at these, um, what, what this thing means. Because when you're first looking at this, you might look at this and go, what the heck is this? This is a weather report, just looks like a string of letters and numbers. But no, this is a weather report. And once you understand how to break it down, they're actually quite easy. You just got to memorize some things. Okay. So let's start from the very beginning, the first block of information here. And what I want you to do when you're studying for these is I want you to get flashcards, and I want you to do first four letters or first block of the METAR. Do first section, second section, third section, fourth section. Just do it like that. So first section of the METAR, write that on the, on the front of your flashcard, and then give an example, K, B, and A, uh, and then on the back, write what that means. So this is always going to be the airport. And what KBNA is, is this is specifically the Nashville, Tennessee airport. Normally when we see an airport ticker symbol, uh, we just see three letters. For example, Raleigh-Durham International Airport is RDU. Um, JFK is the John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. Uh, but in aviation, they throw a K in front of it. What that K means is it's for the continental United States. So Alaska and Hawaii would not have a K. If you're somewhere in Europe or Africa or Asia, it would not have a K. This is for the continental United States. So K, B, and A is just saying, hey, it's in the continental United States. And specifically, this is the report, or this is the Nashville airport. So this report, this METAR report, is for the Nashville airport. And that's what you would put on the back of your flashcard. K, B, and A, Nash or you would say airport, and then example, Nashville airport. So what's this second line mean? This is where things get tricky. This is, that's obviously pretty easy. The second section of the METAR is we get into the time. When was this report generated? And there's two sections here. You have the date, which is just the day of the month. That's the first two digits. So this METAR report was created on the 28th day of the month. They do not tell you which month. It's, you're just assuming this month. But because the people who are looking at it are looking at for today's weather now. It doesn't tell you the month. It doesn't tell you the year. It just says the 28th day of the month. The next four digits of, the, of this section are the time. And they use military time. So this report was created for the 28th day of the month at 1,251 hours. Um, that would be like 1,251 p.m. Because uh, then they're going to do 1,300 hours for 1 p.m. Right. The Z here means Zulu, and that's referring to UTC time. So this is that's what that's in reference to, which could also be you know Greenwich Mean Time, which sometimes is abbreviated um, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. That's simply talking about the time zone that goes through Greenwich, England, the Prime Meridian's time zone. Right. So the whole world of aviation uses one time zone. By the way, if you're one of my former students who just likes to watch my videos, I've advocated this before for the whole world. I just like the idea of one world time zone. I think it makes a lot of sense. A lot of people think I'm crazy. Aviation uses this 
there's one time zone for the whole world in aviation. There's not 24 different time zones. There's just one. And I think it's a really good idea. This way you don't have to worry about changing time zones. If you hate that idea, go ahead and write about in the comments why you hate it. But aviation uses it. You get one time zone. You need to know this because they're going to test about this on the test. They might give you a METAR report here and they'll ask you what time is this was this report created or what time uh, was this report for. Uh, and they might say something like 1251 um, UTC, 1251 Eastern Standard Time, 1251 Pacific Time, or they might give you the airport and then give you that time zone, something like that. Uh, so you have to be, or in this case it'd be Central Time, uh, 1251 Central Time. So you have to be aware it's always, and that's what that Zulu is indicating, it's always UTC, which is uh, Greenwich Mean Time. It's the universal time um, for aviation. This next thing is just saying the report was automatically generated. So at airports, they'll automatically generate these METAR reports. Um, sometimes there is not, or there are METAR reports that are not automatically generated if there's a correction or something like that. Um, I don't always see these in there, especially on the test. I just figured I'd show it. Um, okay, next one, that's pretty easy, right? It says auto, so it's automatically generated. The next one is another one where we have to divide things up. So here, these first three digits, and let me do like this so we know what we're talking about. So these first three digits here go together. This is going to be the wind. So this whole thing here is, um, oops, sorry, I can't spell. This whole thing is going to talk about wind here, right? So that's going to be the wind direction. So that's like if we do our little compass down here, like we've done in past videos. So south is 180. Um, East would be 90, right? So 120, at something like southeast, just about southeast, right? Uh, that's the direction the wind is coming from. So the one wind is coming out 120 degrees. The next two digits here, um, let me just leave that off like that. So these next two digits right here, the 08, is referring to the wind speed. So the wind speed is 8 knots. That's what the KT means. You need to know that. They might try to trick you or test you on that to see if you know that that's 8 knots and not 8 miles per hour. Right? So the wind, in this case, at the Nashville airport on this day at that time, is coming from 120 degrees at 8 knots. This 4SM over here, so going on to the next thing, this is all together. That's going to be 4 statute miles of visibility. That's how far you can see. So um, I'm just going to write vis over here. Uh, and let me, just so you have it, I'll put this as uh, date, and then this over here as the time, just so, in case you want to take like a screen capture of this right here, if that helps you. Okay, time, and then this over here would be airport. I don't know if you want to take a screen capture and that helps you. Okay, so that's the visibility, four statute miles of visibility. Remember when you're flying a drone, you need three statute miles of visibility at minimum. Again, that doesn't mean you have to be able to see the drone from three miles away. You're not going to be able to see a DJI Mavic Mini from three miles away. It just means you need to be able to see for three miles. So on this day in Nashville, you could see four miles away. This way you don't, you know, if an airplane's coming, you can see it. Or you can see a tower or a building that's three or four miles away. So that's what that means. The max you'll ever get here is 10. They'll try to trick you on this sometimes too and by, put, and by putting like 11 miles of visibility. They'll, when it's perfect visibility, they just put 10 statute miles or 10 SM. Uh, that's the, as high as it gets for visibility. Okay, next thing over here, this is weather conditions. So both these two things you can think of as that. This is just going to mean rain, and that minus sign means light rain. If there was nothing here, no dash, no plus, it would just be rain. If it was a plus, it would be heavy rain. So this is just going to be rain. Um, and then this over here is haze. Um, I think uh, most of these, you'll see a lot of different things. Most of these abbreviations over here are pretty easy and straightforward. Um, rain, RA, kind of makes sense. Haze, HZ makes sense. The only one that's a little weird you might want to memorize is BR, which is mist. Um, thunderstorm is TS. Um, 
so you'll, you'll want to be aware of some of those. You don't have to memorize every single one because uh, I do think a lot of them are straightforward. Okay, next one we'll, thing we'll talk about is what comes after the weather, whether there's rain or not rain or thunderstorms, is, um, is the clouds. If there's no clouds, they'll put, um, I think it's, it's either C, uh, well, let me get back to that one. I can't remember if it's CLR or just, yeah, yeah I think it's CLR. They'll, so you know that it's clear. Um, and uh, right here is broken clouds. So that's what this is. These are going to be clouds. And what they do here that you want to be aware of is they add two zeros to this. So this is zero, one, zero. And so this is saying that there's clouds at 1,000 feet. So be aware of that. That's what that BKN means. It's broken clouds. So what happens in aviation when we're doing weather? And again, in future videos, we'll go more, more over weather. But they break the sky up into eight parts, right? And so if you have all eight of those parts have clouds on them, that's an overcast day. There's clouds everywhere, right? If seven of those eight parts, I think it's something like five to seven of those eight parts have clouds and only, you know, one to three parts of the sky are open, that's considered broken clouds. So this would be broken clouds at 1,000 feet, which is... Um, yeah, 1,000 feet for broken clouds. Uh, I was going to put overcast on here too, but as you can see, I started running out of board space. Uh, if you see overcast, if you see OVC, that's going to be overcast clouds. Um, <laughs> just so you're aware of that. Next one, uh, this is the temperature. So we'll put um, right here, and this is temp. That's what that is over here. What they do is you have your temperature. And then your dew point. I'll put DP for dew point. Um, the, let me make that line so you know that's talking about the temp. So this is 21 degrees Celsius and then a 17 Celsius dew point. Um, I know the FAA, it's like they like to mess with you with changing the standards of the system they use for measurement. On um, Sometimes it's metric and sometimes it's imperial. When they're talking about distance, they're usually doing it in miles and feet, right? If you're saying, how high can you fly your drone on the test, it's going to be 400 feet um, as opposed to 120 meters. So they'll usually test you in feet. If they're talking about visibility, it's statute miles, right? They're talking about miles. Um, when they're talking about wind, they're usually, usually putting it in knots. Um, and uh, But when they're talking about temperature, they use Celsius. They go to Celsius here. And so you just got to be familiar and realize that and understand that and just be willing to switch. You know, sometimes it's going to be uh, miles or sometimes it's going to be metric. Sometimes it's going to be imperial. In this case, they use the metric. All right. One important thing, they'll test you here. They might give you like a METAR and they might ask you something like, uh, what are some hazardous conditions that could occur at this airport on, on this day from this METAR report? And the answer here, well, the answer here won't be fog, right? If you are within three degrees, if the temperature and the dew point are within three degrees of each other, then you'll start seeing fog. That's when fog can occur. So if the temperature and the dew point are the same, you're going to have fog. If they're within three degrees, likely to have fog. In this case, they're four degrees apart, so not, you know, fog probably wouldn't be an answer in this question. It's not as likely to have fog here, though it is getting kind of close to that three degree marker, obviously. But just know that that's what that is. So we got our temp and our dew point, and they're not within three degrees of each other. The last one, which I don't think it's tested very much, well, there's two things. There's this right here, which is going to be the pressure. That's talking about the atmospheric pressure, and in this case, it's saying that it's 30.05 Hg is the atmospheric pressure that day, which is a little bit above the, of the standard day atmospheric pressure. Um, and I'll get into standard day when I talk about weather. Um, then after that, they'll have the remarks. I didn't see any questions that tested the pressure in the remarks. You might get the pressure uh, from the stuff that I've read that the remarks are not on the tests. Um, so that's why I didn't put the remarks on here. That's usually like instructions for more manned aircraft. Um, anyway, that's all the things I wanted to go over for the METARs. So let me give you a couple other side things I want to discuss that you might see as well. So little changes here that you could see. 
Um, here with wind, let's go back to wind and let's talk about this real quick. So sometimes what you might see with wind is something like this. So let's just keep everything the same. So it's coming out of 120 degrees, so coming out of the southeast. And let's say the wind is still um, 0, 8. But then what could happen is um, you'll have like G21 KT. All right, so what's happening here is this. Uh, sorry, my marker's dying on me. Right there, that's talking about gusts. So it stays the same at first. Those first three numbers are the direction. Second two numbers are the speed. And then these three next characters are gusts if they have that in. If they put the G21, that's saying gusts up to 21 knots. But the sustained wind is still 8 knots, okay? So don't get that confused as gust at 8 and the sustained wind at 21. That obviously doesn't make sense, right? Uh, what else is another thing that you could see change? Um, the only other things that you could see different, like I said over here, you could see things like, um, just trying to see if this marker is going to write, TS for thunderstorm, you might see BR for mist. Um, those are some other things that you might see on this end. Over here, you could see things like um, overcast. Uh, you could see that. Um, scattered clouds, a few other things. I found the clouds pretty easy. I th Oh, one last thing that definitely could throw you off, and then I'll end this video so it doesn't get too long, is let's say we got temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, and then maybe what you'll see, especially if you get a desert area, is something like this, 21M7. And so a lot of my students had a hard time with this one. They're like, what does that M mean? Okay, uh, let me do, let me do this. Actually, this is even, let me do it a little differently. Let's say it's not 21, because this is really, I think they, they love to trick people. Let's just say it's like, um, let's say it's six degrees. Okay, so six degrees Celsius and then M7. Well, it's like, a lot of my students are like, well, does that mean the dew point seven degrees? No, remember the dew point cannot be higher than the temperature. So what this M is saying is minus 7. So it's 6 degrees Celsius for the temperature, minus 7 dew point. You'll usually see that in desert locations like Las Vegas, Phoenix, something like that where it's really dry. And so the drier it is, the lower the dew point it is. The more humid it is, like I'm on the East Coast um, in a coastal area, the more humid it is, the higher you know that dew point is, the closer it could get to the actual temperature. So in a dry area like deserts is when you're more likely to see that low, that's a low, 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 low dew point at minus seven, right? Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I've, everything I want to talk about with the METARs. Um, if you have questions, I know these can be confusing a little bit. I really don't think they're that tough. Uh, if you just study them and do what I said, like make a separate flashcard for each of them, um, you know, second, second part of a METAR, third part, fourth part, fifth part, sixth part, and then do the same thing with TAFs. I really think these are knockout easy points once you get to know them. And once you know the METARs, the TAFs come easy. They are so similar to the METARs. They are just like longer. They look like METARs on steroids. Anyway, thank you for watching Mr. Mix Classroom. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. Write something in the comment if you have any questions. Subscribe. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time on Mr. Mix Classroom. Take care.